Okay, so you heard that I'm the director of game design at Quinnipiac University. You might have heard of the poll. After grad school, I did work in the games industry, notably at Parker Brothers. And I have a background in fine arts. This is what I looked like in 1975, a tempera painting. And, but I kind of rejected it all for my first exhibit in New York, creating this fabric and light installation, which I conceived at the time as a time-based work that you could explore like a three-dimensional painting and the changing, continuously changing light articulated the fabric forms. The viewer engaged in kind of a choreography of movement and perception. So I pursued this idea by doing a series of drawings that explored space-filling algorithms. This is Hilbert's curve where the inside becomes the outside. And this inspired a computer-controlled labyrinth. One of those doors is locked, the other is unlocked. And once you pass in, the, the door locks behind you and the viewer sees that they're under surveillance. Oh. The video monitors show current and previous visitors. Like Bentham's panopticon, this is really a mechanism of control to find rational solution. Panic buttons and fun for the whole family. And it was controlled by an Ohio scientific challenger 2P with 48K of memory. Then 10 years later, I developed the Automatic Confession Machine, a Catholic Turing Test. It was inspired by Alan Turing's seminal paper in the journal Mind. Turing sidesteps the question of whether computers can think. Instead, he asks, how well will computers do in the imitation game? The Automatic Confession Machine asks the theological question, can software be ordained to perform the functions of a priest. The ACM was designed to resemble an ATM with a simple keypad, a menu of the seven deadly sins, and the Ten Commandments. After the ecstasy of silicon absolution, the sinner receives a wallet-sized printout of their penance. This is the, uh, that was Landis Museum. This is at the Victorian Albert Museum. And of course, it was redesigned for the iPad and iPhone. Next, the smart stall. The Duchampian Hegelian Master Slave Telecommunications Interface, <laughs> and which was shown at, at Seagraph in New Orleans. Two non functional toilet stalls without plumbing were connected by a T1 line. One at the Center for Contemporary Art, and the other at the New Orleans Convention Center, made infamous later by Katrina. Infrared motion sensors trigger the voice of an abusive semi intelligent agent who orders passers by to enter, momentarily entranced by writing graffiti on the soft board, sent to the other smart stall, the users are rudely interrupted and told to leave. A flush of the toilet to Marcel Duchamp. <laughs> a few years ago, I revisited my split brain interface. The project exploits the wiring of the optic pathways where what is seen in the left visual field is processed by the right hemisphere, vice versa. So, um, I was fascinated by the research into patients who had undergone a commiserotomy, a severing in the corpus callosum, to limit the spread of epileptic seizures. Scientist Michael Gazanica reported how one split brain patient sees a word with the right eye, hence the patient's verbally dominant left hemisphere, but the spoken answer matches the seen word, whereas the nonverbal right hemisphere sees the word but it cannot share it with the left hemisphere, and but the patient can draw it. So I used a screen scope stereoscopic viewer. This is from Pratt, Manhattan. The viewer watches a politically charged, he said, she said drama of two simultaneous video streams inducing artificial cognitive dissonance. The installation really is a documentary of the 1991 Senate Judiciary hearing on the nomination of Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court when Anita Hill came forward to accuse him of sexual harassment. It was first produced at the BAMP Center using a virtual research systems head mounted display. And it was originally called Anita und Clarence in der Halle, Anita and Clarence in Hell, an opera for split brains and modular parts. Last year, in conjunction with Creative Tech Week, I exhibited the prerogatives of power at HarvestWorks. Using Max MSP jitter, uh, large wall-mounted LCD displays of well-known political figures were giving speeches. The viewer's motion in front of these displays would perturb, distort, and disrupt the signal. Uh, and you see some of the processing Marie Le Pen, Bashar el-Assad, and the Donald. So I'm currently showing the Curious Cabinet of Persistence and Change at Odetta Gallery in Bushwick. 
Six drawers in a flat file have motion-activated LCD displays. Each show extremely small-scale, large-scale phenomena, this is like NASA data on Arctic sea ice, that take place over vast geological time scales or in brief moments. Thank you. Thank you.